Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Yasin here and welcome to the very first episode of the Dean Chronicles podcast In this podcast and these episodes what we're going to be doing is I am going to be summarizing each and every sing single one of the notes and classes that I go on with my teachers And the reason why I feel that this is going to be not only extremely relevant to those of you who are listening is because nine times out of ten what we end up doing in the classes that I go through is that we really start to look at the hadith or the ayat or the Quran that we learn and we tr and what we do is we implement it to the day-to-day -day life of all of the Muslims and so I take extensive notes in regards to the classes that I that we go through and we go over oftentimes some very very critical basics that many of the Muslims are completely unaware of. And so what we have been doing as of late, um, after I went ahead and suggested it uh, to my teacher, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him, uh, we talked about how sometimes we as Muslims are trying to learn so much more of the advanced ulum, aka ilms, right? The plural of ilm, knowledge is ulum. And so, and I'm going to try and break down some of these terms as best as I can. I apologize if I uh, don't break them down. So if I do miss any of the terms and you're unfamiliar with any of them, please, please, please don't hesitate to shoot me a message and I can definitely go ahead and define them further. So many times what we do as Muslims is that we go ahead and try and study some of the advanced ulum when in reality, the very basics are what is missing. And so a couple almost about a month or a couple months ago or over, almost a year ago now I think that uh, I went ahead and recommended to my teacher again may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him for all of his effort and hard work that he puts into putting these lessons together for us is why don't we study the word by word and the true meanings behind some of the suwar suwar is the plural of the word surah so surah is singular suwar is plural it's not suras suras is like English mixing with Arabic, it's suar. So why don't we go over some of the suar that we already know, but we don't really understand the meaning behind. And so that is the uh, actual, that is the actual, what we're, what we're currently working on, the theme. And so there are other suar that we have gone over. We were going over uh, the ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah. But since Ramadan, we have gone ahead and started from the back of the Qur'an and going surah by surah. And so in this episode, we are going to be talking about Surah to Quraysh. Now, before I go any further, I want to make this, because this is going to be a recurring theme on all of the suar. Again, suar is the plural of the word surah. I'm going to break these down just so that way it is very straightforward is that So this theme that I want to go over is how to be able to say the names of the surah surah in the Quran okay this is very very important and I'm going to get into surah to Quraysh in a second but because this is going to be a recurring theme I want to go ahead and address it right here so many times most people what they say is they say surah Quraysh or surah Baqarah or you know they'll say Surah Fatiha. But in reality, the right way to say the name, the correct Arabic way to say the name, is that there is a Ta Marbuta there, which is uh, Surah Tu, right? So you say Surah Tu is the connecting, right? The, usually the reason why people say Surah, the reason they say Surah is because that's in and of itself. If you're stopping right there after the name, the word Surah, then you say Surah. That's it. But when you're trying to connect to something else, you're gonna then continue, and so it's gonna be Surah Tu. And then you're going to put the name of the surah there. So the name of the surah, in the case of Fatiha, is Al-Fatiha. That is the name of the surah, is Al-Fatiha. So when you're connecting the two together, it's going to be Surah Tul Fatiha. Again, Surah Tu, that is the continuation of the word surah, right? If you're going to continue to another word, you're going to say Surah Tu, and then Al-Fatiha. And then because there's a connection between the two, you're going to say Surah Tul. You're going to connect the Ta to the Alif and Lam, which it connects directly to the Lam because the Alif gets omitted. So it becomes Surah Tul Fatiha. Okay? So it's going to be Surah Tul Baqarah. Surah Tun Nas. Now, uh, I'll explain in further lessons. I'll probably make a whole separate episode on this. There's things called Lam Shamsiya and Lam Qamariya. So the reason we don't say Surah Tul Nas is because there are certain letters that we skip the lam with because they're a little bit difficult on the tongue. So we don't say suratul nas because in the in the makharij, in the actual pronunciation, the lam and the noon are very close together. And so because of that they're called the letters of shamsiya, which means that they're basically what we skip the lam. And so we say suratun nas, right? Suratul falak. 
right? We're connecting Suratu, Suratul Ikhlas, Suratul Kafirun. Now, the only exception to this, and it's not really even an exception, it's just that when you are talking about the names of something, right? If you say Surat, uh, if you say Muhammad, there's no Al there. It's not Al Muhammad, right? Al is usually attributed to nouns. And so in that case, what ends up happening is that instead of it being Suratul Muhammad, it becomes Suratu Muhammad. Because there's no Alif Lam there. And so in the same way, if you say Suratu Ibrahim, right? Suratu Yusuf. It's not Suratul Yusuf. It's Suratu Yusuf. Suratu Ibrahim. Suratu Muhammad. And so in the same case with Suratu Quraysh, the name, the Quraysh, Quraysh is a name, and we're going to talk more about it when we get into the lesson, which is the name of the tribe of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so because it is a name, there is no alif lam, right? There's al-fatiha, there's an alif lam there. There's al-baqarah, right? The cow, right? Al-fatiha, the opening, right? Uh, Al-falaq, al-nas, the, the people, um, the mankind. But here, because it's a name, because it's a noun, there is no alif lam. Alif lam, you only attach not to, you don't say the yasin, right? You don't say al-yasin, you say yasin, because it's a name. And so in the same way, whenever there is a name, as the, as the name of the surah, then it becomes surah tu Quraysh. So again, it's not surah Quraysh, it's surah tu Quraysh. And so this is a very important um, input that I wanted to go ahead and clarify right now because it is going to be a recurring theme. And so when we go on to the next week's surah, it's going to become surah tul fil. We don't want to say surah fil. Right, that is completely incorrect, and I and I see many people um, doing this, and this was something that may Allah subhanahu wa taala be pleased with him. My teacher taught me earlier on, and he would kind of get upset every single time I said it, and it quickly, very very quickly, became something that became a part of my uh, vocabulary is being able to say the correct pronunciation and names of the suwar. Again, suwar is the plural of surah. And so if you hear me say that a lot, then that is going to be what I am saying. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and make this a separate podcast episode because this lesson that we just went over I think is very critical. Many people don't understand how to actually say the name of the surah in and of itself. And so before we even get into the explanation of the surah, we have to be able to say the name of the surah correctly. And so in this case, it's surah tu Quraysh. So I'm going to repeat this, recap everything. Is the word surah, when you stop there, right? If you're just saying surah, hey, I'm going to read this surah. That's it. It's a surah. That means the ta at the end of the word surah turns into a ha. So we say surah, right? Surah. But then when we're continuing, in the Arabic language, when you continue, the last letter has a haraka on it. Haraka is, uh, you can, it's zabar, zair, pesh, fatha, dhamma, kasra. That is what we call a haraka. Haraka literally means uh, movement, right? So you add a haraka, you add a fatha, dhamma, kasra, or you add a zabar, zair, pesh. They both mean the same thing. It's just one's Arabic, one's uh, Urdu. And so, uh, in the case of surah, the word surah, the ta at the end of the word surah has a haraka on it which becomes a dhamma. So it becomes surah tu. Okay? So I'm recapping here. It becomes surah tu. And then you're then going to connect it to the name of the surah. So if the name of the surah is al-Baqarah, then you're going to then say surah tul baqarah. If the name of the surah is al-Fatiha, you're going to say surah tul Fatiha. And so even in English, when I write this in my notes, I always don't put, I don't put S-U-R-A-H. I always put S-U-R-A-T, U, and then I put Al-Fatiha or Al-Baqarah. So it's like Suratul Baqarah. And so the only exception, or again, as I said, it's not really an exception, but the only other case for this is when it comes in the course of a name. And when it's in the course of a name, like Quraysh, Muhammad, Ibrahim, uh, um, Yusuf, right? All of these are names. Right, and all these are names in surah. So there's a surah named Muhammad. There's a surah named Ibrahim. There's a surah named Yusuf. Right, all of these are surah names. And so in that case, it would be surah tu Muhammad, surah tu Ibrahim, surah tu Yusuf. So you'd leave out the alif and the lamb there. So I wanted to go ahead and make this a separate podcast episode. And inshallah, in the very next episode, we're then going to go inshallah bi into the actual explanation of surah tu Quraysh. And now you guys actually know why it is that I'm saying it that way. I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.